Hello everybody. Um, today in this video we're going to talk about the matrices um, uh, as an introductory part of the uh, software. Um, so we said last time that the software is a matrix based software so it's important for us to know how to define a matrix, how to deal with it, how to extract, extract data from it. Um, and how to, how to edit it and do any operation that you are interested in. So um, the first thing we need to do is know how to define a matrix to the software. So to define a matrix you have to keep in mind that the matrix consists of rows and columns. Um, and when defining a matrix you need to um, define it the same way you write it by your hand. So let's say we have a square matrix that is 3 by 3. Uh, it's 1, 2, 3, the first row, 3, 4, 5, 6, second row, 7, 8, 9 in the third row. And I'll call it matrix A. Um, the first thing to keep in mind is that the matrix uh, is uh, defined as a square bracket. So whatever is in the square brackets will be understood as a matrix. Uh, you have to write the first row 1, 2, 3 with the space in between or commas. I, I personally like the space, they both do the, both do the same thing so I will put the, the spaces. Uh, then go to the next row. So I'm, I'm done with the first row. To go to the next row you have to tell MATLAB that you're going to the next row. So to do this you have to add a semicolon which, which is the same semicolon we used to hide the output of the uh, command that we used last time. Then 4, 5, 6, then 7, 8, 9. So when you press enter you will see that this is how the matrix looks like. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, exactly like what we wanted to do. And it's defined here as a matrix that is 3 by 3. Its size now is 3 by 3, which is the matrix A. Okay. One cool thing is that if you double click here you can open a window which is close to like a spreadsheet like Excel. And it shows you how the matrix looks like. Just another way of looking at it. I personally don't use it a lot. Um, so this is uh, the first thing to define a matrix. Let's define another matrix. It's called B is um, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, um, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, so it's a matrix. I can define another matrix C which is uh, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. I'm doing this because there is a common mistake that I'll do right now. Uh, 900, 1000, 1100, 1200. So what I did here is a very, uh, I did it on purpose, but it's a very, very common mistake that you miss a space while you're writing the matrix. So when you press enter, it's not going to be, uh, it's, it's going to show you show up an error. Uh, MATLAB does not understand this matrix. The matrix has to be consistent, meaning that all the rows must have the same number of columns and all the columns must have the same number of rows. And what you have here is the first row has four columns, the second row has four columns, and the third row has only three columns. So once you put this space, the problem is fixed. So it's important for us to understand how this works. Uh, one more thing we, we can learn now is that when you look at the matrix B and C, which are three rows and four columns, you would see that it is defined as three by four. Three is the first number which stands for the number of rows. Four is the second number which stands for the number of columns. Okay. Uh, so it's important for us to know uh, how the the matrix uh, is is understood by MATLAB. Um, the the importance of this three by four thing is that you can use it to uh, do some edits to the matrix. So I'll I'll, uh, uh, I'll show you something. There is a matrix that, that's called G that I defined before. Um, I'll I'll de I'll define it one more time. So. To go back, um, by the way, to go back to the history, you can um, uh, press the up arrow. So I'm pressing up, and now this is the matrix G that I just uh, wrote before we start the video. Uh, one more thing I didn't mention in the pre previous video is that, let's say I have a variable that's called um, O, uh, which, for instance, equals 10. And I want to change the value of O, so what I do is Right, O equals 15. So now O equals 15, and the old value of O is now gone. We, we, we do not know anything about O equals 10 now. O equals 15 at this point. So for instance, I have this matrix G. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll clear the command window. 
Um, let's see how G looks like. So this is how G looks like. And you see it's it's a 6 by 6 matrix. It's a big one. It's not very big, but it's a big matrix. Uh, and I want to change the value of one of these numbers in here. So I have, let's say I want to change this 0 to be like 5 or, or 10. Uh, I'll change it to a very different number, to like 50. Okay. Uh, so this lies in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's the fifth column. And this is in the fourth row. So one thing we can do is to uh, rewrite the matrix and then go to this 0 and put it as 50. Okay. So this, this does the job. But it's not the best way to do it, actually, because... Um, in, in many cases, you don't have the luxury to go into this exact matrix and do the edits by yourself. You might have a big program and you will not allow to go to this place and edit it. You cannot do it by yourself. So the easy way to do this is to tell MATLAB to go to this part of the matrix and change this number. And to do this, you can just write G. And Whenever you write G and then anything between brackets, you tell MATLAB that you are doing something in G. Okay. So I want MATLAB to go to G in the, we said it is in the fourth row and in the fifth column. So it tells you that it is 50. Okay. Uh, you can you can do more. You can ask MATLAB to show you the, uh, or, or first let's let's change it, this number. So I, I'll, I'll tell MATLAB that you, you need to change this number to 100. So it will rewrite the whole matrix with the uh, edit that you requested. Okay, you can extract any type of data you want. You can extract a column. So let's say I want MATLAB to go into G and get the uh, the fourth column, um, the fourth row. I'm sorry. So so you need the fourth row, row number four, but but it's not a single cell. You want all the cells. So you have to get all the columns. To do this, you have to put a column which is shift and semicolon okay so it gives you all the numbers in this you can do the same for the rows you can ask him to get all the columns in row number uh, or I mean all the rows in column number two so this is all the data that you have here you can change it you can ask him to um, make the fourth column equals uh, like 10 uh, 20 30 40 50 60 so it will change the whole thing so it's easy very very easy to manipulate the matrix change anything you can even add a row so uh, i i can define a new row it's called for instance um uh, p so p equals 100 200 300 400 uh, 500 600 so this is a new row that i define and i want to make a matrix that is a merge between g and p so I want P then G. So I'll I'll put a matrix that's called S, which consists of P. Um, G will be in the next next row. So I, I want to go one more row. So I put a semicolon and then G. So I have a new matrix that's called S, which consists of P as a first row, and then the rest of the rows are the matrix G. Very very simple and straightforward. You can do the same thing. Uh, with with adding a column, but before adding column, it's uh, it's uh, like uh, a good to know that you can do one thing that's called the transpose. Transpose is to def change the row into a column and column into a row. So I'll define u, which is p transpose. Transpose is just the apostrophe, which is the button next to the enter button. Uh, so u is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. So it's a new uh, it's called a column matrix. That's a vector matrix. Okay, um, and I can I can do the same thing. I can say that u equals uh, if I want to add add a column to uh, a, new, a new value at the end of the column u. So I'll say it's u and add a column that is 700. So now u is uh, seven by one. Okay and s equals 7 by 6. So I'll add u at the end of s. I'll define a new matrix r which is consisting of s and u. And here I'm not gonna put a semicolon because um, uh, it's, it's adding an, a, a row. No, I mean a column, not a row. I'm going to the next, I'm not going to the next row. So I'm now defining this r which consists of this row. Uh, I mean this matrix uh, which is s. 
and the the new column which is uh, u that I just defined so it's it's very easy um, to uh, to do this and of course if I uh, if, if I add a column that is doesn't have the same number of rows it will show up an error like the error that we saw before uh, we didn't see that before so let's let's see it if, if I define um, a matrix that's called y which is a column matrix one two three four five six um, uh, and then transpose so this is y and I, I, I want to add y at the end of r so I'm, I'm, I'll say z equals y and um, r so it's it's gonna give you this error because the dimensions do not match it's not consistent um, so if I put 7 at the end of it and then rewrite it it will work uh, so you have to keep in mind that the the dimensions must be uh, consistent otherwise it, it's not gonna uh, accept that so now we understood how to define a matrix how to edit a matrix to uh, extract data so one more thing about extracting data from a matrix uh, we said that we can extract a single cell so we said uh, for instance z uh, 2 2 uh, 2 2 it's gonna be 2 okay which is this I can extract a whole column and the whole row and I can extract uh, a region out of the matrix not just a single row or a single column I can extract rows from 2 to 5 and columns from 3 to 4 okay which is rows from 2 to 5 one um, I mean um, rows from 2 to 5 this 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 uh, and this and columns from 3 to 4 so extracting neg 1 negative 4 2 3 negative 2 negative 5 20 and 30 so we, you can extract anything you want from a matrix uh, there are other stuff that we can do um, uh, you can uh, define a zero matrix uh, if you say I want to make zeros of 10 by 10 so it will create a matrix that is 10 by 10 with all zeros uh, you can make uh, make it once. Uh, oops, uh, I'm sorry. Um, so it will create it all once. You can make an identity matrix. You can say I want to make an I. The identity matrix is a matrix with zeros except for the diagonal, which is all ones. So it's an identity matrix. <laughs> Um, you can, and of course we all know that the identity matrix must be square matrix, but MATLAB can do identity matrices for uh, non-square matrices. It will do the diagonal and the, all the rest will be zeros. Like in this case, it's five rows and six columns. The sixth column is all zeros because it's not on the diagonal. Okay. Um, so let's recall our matrix Z. Uh, you can uh, extract data from matrix, uh, or, or it's not data, I mean you can extract the very last value of the matrix by, by writing Z and between the brackets you, pro you type end. Um, I think I didn't put the Z, yeah. Um, so, so it has to be uh, Z between brackets and it tells you it's 70, it's the, the very uh, last value. You can also define one or extract or, or define one of the data of the matrix by um, uh, not using a row and a column. For instance, if I say Z15, it will give me a number, which is 200. And the way it does it is that it goes column by column. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, Oh, uh, I mean, this is 15. This is the value that we're looking for. Okay, so it is, uh, you can do it this way, but I, I personally prefer to go with row and column because it's easier for me to get the exact location of the value that I'm looking for. Um, you can um, uh, extract the dimensions of a matrix. Let's say I want to know what is the size of the matrix Z. It tells you it's seven rows and eight columns, which is actually written here. But you might need this size to do more calculations out of it. Okay, so uh, I can say I want the size of Z uh, as uh, a number that I'm going to use in, in the future. 
Uh, so these are mainly the main operations that we can use in MATLAB for matrices. Uh, so I'll stop now and we'll see more operations in the next video. Goodbye.